Hey, what's up? Easy Overdose here. I wanted to make an educational video about the difference between CPU and GPU dependent games and how much the CPU and GPU affects either. So, to start this off, basically going to have Task Manager up. I'm going to have GPU Z up. So, just recording the desktop with the recording software going. It's running about 15% GPU load, about 15% and it's kind of spiking, spiking up to maybe 20, something like that. And then the CPU load is 6%, but that's kind of dependent on what it's recording. So if I swing this around real fast, you can see it spikes up a little bit. So hmm, 6 to 10%, something like that. So what I'm going to do is load up two different games. We're going to use World of Warcraft and Witcher 3 for this test. And this is something that everybody can do at home. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick to, to where you can replicate these tests and you can see exactly how much each is affecting your own FPS. And this will give you a good idea if you were thinking about overclocking and how much overclocking is going to affect your FPS if it's worth it, worth the trouble or not. Now this isn't like an overclocking guide at all, this is just to give you an idea of how much overclocking can affect your FPS. So, I have uh, DxTory loaded up and that's this frame counter in the corner, so you're going to be watching the top left corner, and then we're watching right here where it says speed, 4.45 gigahertz. We're going to watch that, and then we're going to watch this GPU load line right here and it's currently at 85 percent so we have Warcraft loaded up and I have VSync on and basically just I found a spot where it's like the highest GPU load around 90 percent at these stairs looking up it's actually about 95 percent so what I'm gonna do is you can do this at home go to your start menu and type power options and click that one and it's going to bring up your power plan and go to the change plan settings on whichever plan that you have selected and then change advanced power settings and then scroll down and then go to processor power management and then go to maximum processor state so what I'm going to do is when you change this this is going to make it to where it limits your CPU speed so I'm running at 4.5 gigahertz right now I'm going to change this to 50%. And it's not a true 50%. I'm not sure how it scales it, but it's going to drop it all the way down to 1.54 gigahertz. Okay, basically like laptop slow laptop clock speed. And you can see FPS goes from being 60 to it can't even hold 30. You can also see a GPU load instead of running around like 90%, it's now at 55%. You can see the CPU load dropped as well. And that is because the CPU processes draw calls. Every single animation that you see on screen, every, sing every single one of these sparkles, every single frame where this uh, mount is doing something different, is like hundreds, maybe thousands of draw calls. And the CPU has to process these draw calls and then send them to the GPU so the GPU can render a frame and send it to your monitor. So in this instance, the GPU or the video card is just sitting on its hands waiting on the CPU to render frame. And the, and the CPU can't do that because it's not fast enough to do it. So if we turn this back up to 100%, hit apply. You can see, boom, instantly goes to 60 FPS. In fact, I think I need to turn off VSync just to make this a little bit more credible. So let me spin around, load up the new textures. A little choppy the first time you spin around. So I'll just kind of like run around this little area here. About 65, 60, something like that. And then we'll sit right here. So we're about 
65 ish and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to let's try like 70 70 is putting it at 2.14 so that's actually like pretty close to the speed of like a, a laptop CPU how high it would be clocked and and don't get your hopes up if you're on a laptop because most of the laptop laptops don't have unlocked chips which means you can't overclock them but you can see the difference between uh, maybe if we do a little bit more and we can actually get get half oops closed it 2.24 so that's actually that's half so that's half my clock speed 2.24 I'm running at 4.5 so you can see at half the clock speed I'm losing about 20 FPS and if you break that down into a percentage that's like 30 percent of my FPS so I lost 30 percent of my FPS by actually about 30 to 50 whenever I'm moving around down here it's dipping all the way down to like 35 so losing 20 to 30 percent of my FPS by losing half my clock speed so if I was to overclock my CPU to twice its clock speed then I would gain 20 to 30 percent FPS just like that so is clock speed important for a while overclocking fast CPU very and clock speed is not equal uh, that 4.5 on an Intel and this is a second gen Intel 3930k it's uh, it's equivalent to probably 4.4 or 4.35 from a third gen Intel and then the fourth gen Intel like the 4790k it's probably just as fast as this at like 4.2 so they get like 10% faster each generation and then if you compared it to AMD AMD has a much lower uh, single thread performance ratio than Intel because it has a lower cycles per instruction ratio so to get equal performance to this to 4.5 on the second gen Intel you would probably need to be at like 5.5 gigahertz on an AMD so sorry all you AMD fans so what I'm gonna do now is this is MSI Afterburner and what I'm gonna do is I am going to basically down clock my video card so you can see how much FPS you lose down clocking the GPU so what I'm gonna do is I have I got the memory clock like overclocked big time and I already got the core clock underclocked a little bit for stability reasons and I'm just gonna turn those both way down and hit apply so we're at we're at like 60 67 68 something like that 67 68 just kind of bouncing around hit apply we lost seven seven or eight well seven or eight F FPS down clocking the card by probably 20 percent it does uh, get some hiccups when you move around though so not much at all I can't down clock at 50% like I did the CPU or farther but that gives you an idea that uh, it doesn't scale the same way so we turn these back up hit apply and then we got our 67 back so for a while clock CPU clock speed is extremely important so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to load up Witcher 3 Alright, so we are in Witcher now. I'm just going to drag these over. And you can see this game's a little bit harder to not get uh, max GPU load in. But on this mountain here, if I look at the ground, you can see GPU load is 95%. And CPU load is, it's whatever. CPU load is not really important. 
So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, basically, I will turn VSync off right away. Drag these over. Turn the VSync off. Make sure video card. If it's getting more than more FPS than your refresh rate, your monitor can't actually display more FPS than your refresh rate. So 60 hertz monitor, you're only seeing 60 FPS. It doesn't matter if you're saying 650 FPS. You're only seeing 60, and all them extra frames that you can't see is just being turned into heat. So get away from this loud horse for a second. Uh, just gonna look at the ground and do the exact same thing. Go in here and I'll turn this to 50, getting 63 FPS, and you can see we are dropping down to 1.54 gigahertz. Come back in the game, and we're still getting 60 FPS. It did not care one bit. We lost a couple frames per second. Doesn't care at all. So what I'm going to do is just bump that back up to 100. And then we're back up to 4.5. And then I will turn... Do the same thing again. Turn all this down. So we're sitting 62, 63. Hit apply. And we lose about the same amount we lost in a while, probably about 7. It doesn't really care too much either. And that's the difference between an old uh, an old gaming engine that's CPU dependent versus a new gaming engine that is GPU dependent. This gaming engine is newer, it's uh, much better optimized, it takes advantage of your resources better. And as a general rule, uh, for most things, your any game that has any game that's like an MMO or has like an online, like a, a built-in, like the online plays a, a huge role in the game. Those kind of games seem to be more CPU dependent. And we'll do one more example just to finish this thing off. So, I got Grand Theft Auto 5 loaded up, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll go in here and turn off VSync. And we're getting about 63. Just probably turn over here, gets the traffic. Basically getting 60 FPS. So I'm going to drag these over. Just so we can see them. GPU load's basically maxed out, 98%. CPU load, pretty even spread on all the cores. dropping an FPS. I think it's from all that traffic coming over. Can't really control that in this game. So, 57, 58 FPS. We'll tab out and we'll switch to this. And we're going to turn that down to 1.54 gigahertz. Super slow CPU speed. And you can see that greatly affected the FPS, and that's because uh, GTA is actually pretty CPU dependent because of its online factor. It goes back to the thing about if it's got uh, online attached to it, like MMO factor, it's probably CPU dependent. So, lost about half of our FPS, not quite, we're back up to 40. So if we change this back to 100 right now.
almost 60. So now let's change the GPU clocks. Lost about the same as we did on Witcher and WoW, so only lost probably about 7. So the GPU speed isn't really affecting it too much. Same as WoW, same as Witcher. So on these games, what's more important for uh, Witcher and for GTA is not necessarily the clock speed, but just how powerful the GPU is. Like you can't compensate for the amount of shaders that a GPU has by overclocking it. But you can compensate for the lack of CPU power your CPU has by overclocking it. So that's it. That concludes my little, uh, little educational video about CPU versus GPU versus CPU dependent games versus GPU dependent games. So if you learned something, hit that like button, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought about it. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.